All right, how's it going? Some random chili head here. And today I'm going to be reviewing uh, a homemade habanero hot sauce. Um, I did not create the recipe for this. This actually uh, was from Rick Bayless, the, uh, the Iron Chef that some of you may know about. And um, he's very, very renowned in like Tex-Mex cuisine, I think, if I remember correctly. And uh, uh, yeah. So the profile of the sauce, it's pretty uh, uh, thin, you know, pretty mild body. Um, it has a good kick to it, but it's not ridiculously, uh, it's not too overwhelming to myself. Um, if I had to take a guess at what I think the uh, Scoville scale is, mind you, it, it, uh, I had to use orange habaneros to, uh, to make the sauce. Basically, l let me actually just tell you the recipe really fast. The recipe called for 12 habaneros, orange habaneros, one cup of diluted uh, apple cider vinegar with water. So one, one cup apple cider vinegar, one cup water, half a cup of onion, white onion, half a cup of carrot, and uh, two teaspoons of salt, and apparently no sugar, which uh, I, I guess didn't need it because apple cider vinegar is kind of sweet on its own. And uh, six cloves of roasted garlic, he said. You basically just char them in a pan on the stove. That's kind of how he does it. And it's nice. It adds kind of a like a Mexican flair to it. You can see some of the charring. You get up close with this. You can see... See that. You see some black spots and some seeds because apparently there was no part of the recipe to strain it. But in the future, I'm going to strain it because I think I'm going to be having issues pouring this sauce. And I just made myself some corn uh, quickly because I ran all out of uh, uh, pizza to uh, to make. But let me try. Hopefully, this isn't a fail. Okay, it's pouring nicely. Look at that. As you can see, it has a very glossy, thin consistency. Even with the chunks, it actually comes out of the squeeze bottle kind of smoothly when it when it's able to. Um, and the smell is very uh, apple cider vinegary. Very, very apple cider vinegary. It's not bad, but it's not the most pleasant smelling thing. I'd say as far as aroma goes, I'd give it about a 7 out of 10. Not perfect but you go hmm. okay perfect for tacos and pizza the strong vinegar profile of the sauce makes it pretty perfect for pizza um but it has a good kick to it i'd say i'm probably at about a three out of ten on on heat if I had to take a guess for what the Scoville scale is, knowing that orange habaneros typically fall between 200,000 and 300,000 Scoville heat units, I would guess that it's somewhere in that range. Probably, probably no more than like 250,000 though, because it doesn't taste quite as spicy as the Illuminati that I reviewed yesterday, and I know that's got to be a bit more. So, it's a good sauce. It's not super versatile, unfortunately. Um, but it goes very well on, like, you know, lots of Mexican dishes. And, um, you know, fish, in my case, fish substitutes could go really well with. Vegetables goes very well with. And uh, the pizza, and tacos, and burritos. Those, those would be, like, the main uh, pairings that I would go with. And uh, you get a nice yield with the recipe. You get about 12 fluid ounces. So 
think 12 habaneros, 12 fluid ounces, that kind of gives you, you know, it's one habanero per fluid ounce. So it's a decent amount of heat. You get a de decent sting on your tongue. And um, there is the corn. I want that falling out. And I'm going to mix in about two tablespoons. I think that'll be good. Okay. Now the squeeze bottle is starting to fail me a bit. So I'll just have to eyeball the rest. Okay, that should be enough. That looks like about two tablespoons. So we get that mixed in. Uh, anyone who comes across this video, I hope you're having a fantastic uh, day or, you know, when it, wh whichever time of year you're watching this, you like the holiday season. Hope you're having a great holiday season. Um, so, yeah. Also, I find that, you know, habaneros kind of have, like when you eat them straight, they kind of have a flavor profile, uh, a sweetness to them that reminds me a lot of corn. So I figured that this could this could go well. And get that mixed in. It's such a peasant combination. Like it's very peasantly of me to do this, but it's a beautiful combination. The already kind of natural corn-like sweetness that I get from orange habaneros in this sauce brings out the flavor of the corn. You actually taste more of the corn. And I didn't add much salt to the corn. I didn't add much salt to the recipe. I mean, 12 fluid ounces, that's only two teaspoons of salt total. It's a, it's a very, very, very good, um, very good pairing and a good all-around hot sauce. Now, in the future, when I start doing this, you know, switching up the recipe a bit because I do like making hot sauces with the habaneros, especially orange habaneros, there's just something about them. So perfect i'm actually going to switch apple cider vinegar and opt for distilled white vinegar because it's more um versatile it can work so much better with other things because with distilled white vinegar you still taste the vinegar but it doesn't have a unique taste to it that can overwhelm certain dishes or just not pair well with certain dishes like you get from apple cider vinegar so I'll probably opt for that, and I'm probably going to grill some, you know, some tropical fruits, like pineapple and mango, and go for it that way. Probably get a slightly better yield, too, with that. It'll add a lot of body to the, um, to the sauce. And, of course, I'm going to strain it. Matter of fact, if I just make this again, I'm going to strain it. Because... I tried it on popcorn actually a couple of nights back and I would not suggest putting it on popcorn for some reason. I don't know if it's just the apple cider vinegar it doesn't blend well with the nuttiness of popcorn. So it's my advice if you make this, this uh, you know Rick Bayless habanero hot sauce recipe and you decide you want to you know challenge me on that and put it put it on popcorn and douse your popcorn with it go ahead but you've been warned it's it's not a good combination so anything that's super nutty I, I would uh, or earthy I, I wouldn't put it on um,
I don't know if I would put it on sweets. You know, some hot sauces, it can go well on, like, ice cream. I probably wouldn't put it on that either. You know, it's just my own two cents. But it's a very nice hot sauce. Uh, as far as heat goes, it gets a 3 out of 10. As far as aroma goes, it gets a 6 out of 10. As far as uh, uh, flavor goes, I would give it... It's not super versatile, but it has good flavor, so I'll give it about a 7 out of 10. Very, very good flavor. And um, texture gets a uh, 10 out of 10. Very good texture. Obviously, like I said, if you're going to make this sauce and put it in squeeze bottles, be sure to strain it because it pours very nicely, but... You know, if you don't strain out the, the like the, the somewhat solid chunks of habaneros and, and, and the vegetables that you put in, it's going to uh, block the tip of the squeeze bottle. So just keep that in mind. All in all, oh simplicity of the recipe, um, eleven out of ten. It's a it's a very easy hot sauce to make. Very easy. And I will also leave a link in the description for um, the Rick Bayless habanero hot sauce recipe. He goes into a lot of detail about how to make it. And um, it actually saves me a lot of time because now I don't have to ramble on in the video about how to make uh, you know, hot sauce and be safe. I don't, have to, I don't have to do that if I can just link you to a video where... It has everything in it, but when I get to making um, videos of, uh, you know, perfected enough homemade hot sauces that are my own unique creation, I will, uh, I will be sure to list all the important things like you know, cutting super hot chilies, um, wear gloves, and, um, you know, be mindful of uh, blending you know, uh, hot capsaicin at high speeds uh, while they're still, you know, fresh, hot out of the saucepan. But without going into too much detail about that and uh, deviating from the focus of the video, I would highly recommend it. Um, the nice thing, too, about, about homemade hot sauces is you just save so much money. I mean, like the, the last hot sauce that I reviewed uh, before the last one, was the Hot Ones Last Dab uh, Carolina Reaper Special Edition. And it was a very uh, tasty sauce. Um, notwithstanding everything else that I spoke about, it was, it's, it's ridiculously expensive. And um, when, you're, when you're going out and you're trying out hyped hot sauces that are really expensive, it kind of starts to turn a light bulb on where you start thinking about how you can make your own, you know, um, hot sauces, whether it's someone else's recipe or your own unique creation, that saves you so much money and so much work. And uh, you get to control the variables of it. If you want to use less, less peppers or chilies, you can use less of those. If you want to apply more sweetness, you can char the, 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 the fruits and the, and the, and the vegetables uh, or even the peppers, if you want to make it less spicy, you can do that. That's the freedom that you get with homemade hot sauces. So, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the video, and have a nice day.